welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. I hope you brought your tissues, everyone, because today we are talking about my top 10 fantasy authors who make me cry. And obviously there is some subjectivity to this list, but I am relying upon my own experience with these authors who have turned on the tear ducts for me. And of course, I would love to hear about those authors who have made you cry in the comments, but let's get going with this list. This is number two, by the way, in a series that I am doing of top 10 lists, various aspects of uh, fantasy that I think should be highlighted, like authors who make you think and authors who make you cry, authors who make you laugh, and so on and so on. I'm doing a series of these videos, and I think it's a great way to perhaps get some recommendations from people in the comments and have people check out some of the, the picks that I have here. So without further ado, let's get going. At number 10, my author is Ursula Le Guin, author of the Ursi series, which is near and dear to me. This is comfort reading for me in many ways, but it also is powerfully emotional. And I have especially one of the books in mind, and that would be the fourth book in the series, Tehanu. And I think it's interesting to think about the different ways in which authors make us cry. How do they do it? How do they go about doing it? In the, in the Gwyn's case, she does create a deep sense of connection to a character and gives us a character with a, a vulnerability, let's say, uh, a vulnerability that is very obvious from the beginning. And somehow that creates a deep sense of connection with that particular character in Tehanu. Uh, and I find it so endearing and so moving and so touching what happens with that particular character. And at a certain point in the narrative, uh, couldn't hold in the tears anymore. Uh, so Ursula Le Guin is my number 10. And coming in at number 9, I have... A Patrick Rothfuss, with the name of the wind in particular, but author of the King Killer Chronicle. And no, he's not here because he hasn't yet finished Doors of Stone and is making all of his fans cry. Uh, but he's actually here because uh, there are moments in the name of the wind, especially the Dickensian moments for me. And again, this is about the vulnerability of a certain character who goes through some rough times. I don't want to get into spoilers. But you know what I mean. Uh, if you have read The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear, uh, you know who this character is. Uh, the Dickensian brilliance of the uh, early narrative is just wonderful. And there's a certain scene that gets me every time I've read this book. And it is related to music. Uh, and that is set up beautifully from the beginning of this tale. Uh, so yes, Patrick Rothfuss makes my list of authors who have made me cry in the fantasy genre. And then we have, coming in at number eight, Mr. Stephen King, who is known, of course, for his horror, for making people scared and all that sort of thing. Um, but this is an author in this book particularly. Uh, now, I haven't read a lot of, I should preface this by saying, I have not read any Stephen King other than the Dark Tower series. So we're really talking about his, his fantasy stuff, his Dark Tower series here. Wow, talk about a found family. You know, there is a, a, a sense in which I think authors who make us cry do so successfully because they give us a sense of companionship, a, a sense of that something that goes beyond friendship into the realm of family, found family. The Cotet in the Dark Tower series is endearing to anyone who loves this series. And there are some just wonderful moments of vulnerability as these characters get to know each other and as we get to know them uh, through the series. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, you can take an iconic character like, like Roland. He is one of the most iconic characters in all of fantasy. And, you know, he's, he's frightening. You know, he, he's, there's a lot about him that uh, makes me quite uncomfortable. But then we get to see more and more of him, and we get to see about more about his past throughout the series um, and his vulnerability, and it's it's endearing. But it's in this book, The Dark Tower, where I lost it, uh, and Stephen King really got me, uh, and it was a a really amazing experience reading the Dark Tower series. It was one of the weirdest, <laughs> craziest things. But it's that quartet. Also, by the way, there is an animal companion in there. 
And that is also part of what got me <laughs> in, in the series. Animal Companions, I think, are a really effective way to get people's emotions going. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Stephen King. Next on my list, I have Daniel Abraham with the Long Price Quartet. And this is a series where I feel like the, the magic happens over the course of the four books in the Long Price Quartet. But it is in the last of the four, The Price of Spring. I have the omnibus edition here. It is in The Price of Spring where I lost it. And it's because Abraham succeeded in getting me to feel attached to these characters over the course of a lifetime. I had a sense of a life lived here. I, I saw their mistakes. I saw their triumphs. I saw their, 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 their bonds and their hatreds and their love and, and just everything. In four relatively short books, Abraham did an amazing job of giving me a sense of a full life. Uh, for several of these characters who, who made it uh, to the end. And, and uh, there were moments at the very end of The Price of Spring where I had to just, you know, put the book down because I couldn't see to read uh, because Abraham so had, uh, had so effectively gotten to my emotions uh, and just a brilliant job. And next I have at number six, Fonda Lee with the, uh, primarily, I think it was Jade Legacy for me, where I really did the most crying, I think. And my favorite of the trilogy is actually Jade War, the second book. But Jade Legacy has many really beautiful, iconic moments. And they're all kinds of love. You have family is a huge part of the Greenbone saga in a big way, and loyalty to family and the tension between that loyalty and one's quest to be an individual, to seek one's own identity, and the sacrifices involved in maintaining that balance. Um, but it's the bonds that form between these characters, uh, the, the, the family members, uh, that it just can be so moving in ways that I didn't expect when I read, I loved uh, Jade City, thought it was a great book. Uh, but by the end, and talk about a lifetime lived, that's another author who successfully does that here. Uh, you feel attached to these characters. You're invested in their relationships with one another. And there are moments of profound loss, but also understanding. Uh, and Fonda Lee does a great job. She's a, a really fantastic storyteller. Uh, so Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. Yeah, that's, that's one that turned on the faucets for yours truly. And next I have on my list at number five, Mark Lawrence. This is an author who really does a lot for me as a reader. And one of the things that he did primarily in this particular trilogy that begins with Red Sister, this is the Book of the Ancestor. It is a marvelous trilogy featuring the protagonist, Nona. And I found myself in all three of the books, especially in the third book, probably in Holy Sister, but even as early as Red Sister, I found myself losing it and feeling for this main character, uh, her relationships that she forms are just so beautiful. She is so powerful and wonderful and at the same time just so vulnerable. And it is her difference that makes her vulnerable. One of the things that Mark Lawrence is brilliant at is writing characters who are vulnerable and different. And that is something that I, as a reader, find myself identifying with. And I think that's a powerful thing. When we think about how authors can get at our emotions. Often it's through these misfits, these people who uh, don't have a place, uh, the, the, the stranded, the, the lonely ones, and we find ourselves rooting so hard for them. And when they find relationships that are meaningful and beautiful, it can be so moving. Uh, and I love that about it. And there are also just wonderful moments of sacrifice in here. In addition to Nona, a couple of my favorite characters would be Hessa, and uh, Nona forms uh, just a beautiful uh, friendship with, with that character. But there is also Arabella, uh, another favorite for me, uh, and a, just a beautiful uh, relationship that forms in the course of this. Uh, so yeah, there's some really wonderful moments. But yeah, Holy Sister just had me completely reaching for the tissues uh, for, for pages and pages. 
Now, before I get to number four, I want to say that these last four, uh, this, these were tough. This was a tough one for me to figure out exactly how to rank this, but I tried to count the tiers shed, and that's ultimately, I think, how I did it. <laughs> tiers per page, I think, if we can average that out. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's really doable or not, but uh, I, I'm not quite as so scientific about it. But, but these are my top four. Uh, and they are my, the big four of uh, pulling out my heart, piercing my heart, uh, leaving me a, a mess uh, at the end of the story. So let's begin with one of my very favorites, uh, a, a book that has been with me for close to 40 years now. And that is Lord of the Rings and by the, uh, the, the papa of, uh, for many of us, of fantasy, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, yeah, Tolkien is an author who very successfully pulls at my heart at multiple moments in here. Uh, I think it, it's hard to spoil Lord of the Rings, but there are people who haven't read it or, or seen the film, so I won't say any details, but there are moments of loss in here that are just deeply, deeply affecting. Uh, there is a kind of sorrow that pervades this narrative, even in moments of triumph, because Tolkien does masterfully include loss at, at the moment of victory, even. Uh, there is a sense of uh, beauty, from the past that is no longer with us. Uh, and it is just a really poignant melancholy through the series. But there are also particular moments, moments of triumph, uh, moments of coming through uh, with, uh, unexpectedly, uh, and uh, moments of beautiful fellowship in The Lord of the Rings. And that is one of the most wonderful things. And these are the things that endear these characters so much to us. And in the moments when those characters are in peril or, or, or come through or are reunited uh, or, or we lose some along the way, these, uh, these moments affect us incredibly. Um, and yeah, Lord of the Rings, I will always cry when reading Lord of the Rings. So down to the last three here. Uh, and if these make me cry more than Lord of the Rings, you have to believe that these are incredibly emotional reads definitely for me. So we're going to have uh, number three here is going to be John Gwynn, author of The Faithful and the Fallen and the subsequent series of Blood and Bone and also uh, the Bloodsworn trilogy. And I think we're getting book three, by the way, of Bloodsworn out this year. I think October is what I saw. So I'm really excited. Uh, but anyway, John Gwynn is a, a, a master of found family and also animal companions. Uh, just those are the two things that I don't think anyone does better than John Gwynn. Found family and animal companions. There are so many moments in The Faithful and the Fallen that just get me. And in A Blood and Bone, my favorite John Gwynn character actually is Drem from A Blood and Bone. And his relationship with his father is particularly beautiful. Uh, very moving. Uh, but there are some brilliant speeches in here that I can recall vividly. Uh, bringing me to tears. So it's not always moments of sorrow that cause the tears. It can be moments of triumph, moments where you're just stirred, where the, the passion is inside you. And John Gwynn is, he is the author for me who writes with the most heart. His storytelling has heart. That is the best way to describe, I think, John Gwynn's stories is they have heart. Uh, and they're just, you know, they're, they're wonderful for that. Uh, I always feel like when I'm reading a John Gwynn story that somehow it's a spiritual home for me uh, because a lot of my favorite uh, old, old stuff, old influences are the same as his. And uh, he just does a great job of tapping into that while giving us modern characters that we can identify with and uh, whose losses and triumphs move us to tears. And now we're down to the last two. So... Wow, who could they be? <laughs> if you're a follower of the channel, you probably know who these two are. Uh, you might not quite know the order, though, so let's see how that goes. Number two, Steven Erickson, author of The Malazan Book of the Fallen, among many other things, uh, some set in the Malazan world, some not, but uh, it is The Malazan Book of the Fallen, uh, particularly, that moves me to tears. The last, oh, I would say a couple hundred pages of The Crippled God, I, I have a very hard time reading because I have to keep drying my eyes. And it's, there are just so many beautiful moments throughout the series. There are moments of loss. 
there are moments of reunion. I think one of the things that Erickson does beautifully is portraying reunions and characters coming to understanding of one another. And there is some beauty in that. These moments when characters who may have previously even been foes see the humanity in one another. That is just so beautiful and uplifting and sublime. And that is something that Erickson does like no other. I just love, love, love his writing for so many reasons. But he gets me, he gets the tears out of me too. Um, so yeah, um, he just does an amazing job with that. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, I could make a video of, uh, you know, top 10 moments uh, that make me cry just in this one book in The Crippled God, let alone the entire Malazan Book of the Fallen. Um, but yeah, this is, this is just amazing stuff for me. Uh, and speaking of Sublime, my number one author from fantasy who makes me cry, you guessed it, it is Robin Hobb. I have just recently finished The Realm of the Elderlings, but I had read, actually, the first trilogy, the Farseer trilogy, many years ago. And I can't recall if the Farseer trilogy made me cry. I suspect on a reread it probably would. And even the, the, the subsequent series, uh, Lives of Traitors, uh, I can't remember. It was a few years ago. It may have gotten me a few times, actually. I think it did. But I can promise you that I shed more tears in the Tawny Man trilogy than in um, probably any other book series I've ever read. Uh, the Tawny Man just blew me away, uh, shattered me, and in the most beautiful, sublime way. And uh, Robin Hobb is the one, I think, who probably might, might get the most votes for um, uh, the writer who appeals to your emotions. Uh, I mean, for me, she just does a brilliant job. And everybody has heard the, the thing about the slow burn and all of that in the beginning of the book. It's true. The books do start out slowly. But that's part of the genius. Ro what Robin Hobb is doing there is getting you invested in these characters so that when stuff happens, <laughs> you're shattered. That you, you, your tears will flow because you are so attached to those characters and because she is so beautifully portrayed the relationships between them. The what, I mean, you will never find uh, closer friendships written about than in Realm of the Elderlings. Friendships that, that simply transcend uh, the, the physical realm into something spiritual and beautiful. Uh, there is uh, parental, there are, there are parents and children in here. Uh, I mean, in addition to Tawny Man, Fits in the Fool, uh, the final trilogy in the series. Oh my goodness. I mean, being a parent myself, uh, I was absolutely, I had to put the book down multiple times uh, in that series uh, because of what Robin Hobb was exploring and doing and portraying in the parental relationships. So yeah, just such powerful stuff. Uh, a sense of connection between characters. Uh, it's just such a spiritual, beautiful experience reading The Realm of the Elderlings. And uh, yeah, um, she is a, uh, a, a master at squeezing the tears out and uh, giving you an incredibly moving and unforgettable journey that will change you forever. So those are my selections. Those are my top 10 authors who make me cry. And I would like, once again love to hear from you guys about the fantasy authors who bring the tears out for you. Uh, because everybody's a little bit different. We experience stories a little bit differently. So you may, uh, may have some that I haven't read yet as well that uh, you could recommend for me. And I would appreciate that very much. So that is it for me for now. Until next time.